road diet is any time we take any lane out of a road. If you have, say, four lanes and you knock it down to just two lanes, you've put the road on a diet. I first coined the phrase and used it in 1996 in an article that Peter Loggerway and I wrote together. It had sticking power. People liked the term. They could understand what it meant. The most common road diet is converting four lanes to two and then putting in the third lane for turning and then with the extra space adding in bike lanes. It's a way to reallocate space so the street performs more efficiently and it also allows space to be allocated for bicycle pedestrian measures. As a motorist you have fewer lane changes and you now have a dedicated left turn pocket so when you want to make a left turn you have the space to do that and you don't feel any pressure from behind to hurry up and that improves safety for the motorists and for pedestrians who are crossing the crosswalks. We've reallocated the space in the street to accommodate those that live here, that work here, that buy things here, versus uh, privileging those that would just drive through here fast. We used to have a sidewalk where the curb went right through here. We extended it all the way out, so we still have through two car travel lanes here, but we shortened the distance for pedestrians by about 50%. When you have a road diet, typically you have one lane in each direction, and now the prudent driver is setting the speed and not the imprudent driver. So crashes come down. Another real benefit is that it makes it much easier to get across the street. If you're a pedestrian, you end up with less distance to cross. It's quieter and you end up with more people walking and bicycling. We typically see more people socializing. And generally we see the value of properties going up. One city that's way out in front of other cities is San Francisco. San Francisco is up to about 40 road diets, which I believe is the most of any North American city. We have all sorts of road diets where we went from four lanes to three, three to two. Um, we are working on one that goes from six to four. Back in the 1990s, Valencia Street was a four-lane roadway, and the Bicycle Coalition in particular wanted to have a bicycle facility on the street because it was already very heavily used by bicyclists. So the bike lanes went in as a trial. Um, we went from four to three lanes with bike lanes, and there was a, a report written after one year. We found that the number of cyclists increased by about 140%, and we were finding that the merchants along the roadway were actually very open to the, the idea of keeping the, the road diets. After the road diets go in, because motors are driving more prudent, people can shop for parking spaces, and the retail life of the street also improves. So the businesses, typically do better after a road diet. To a lot of people, it's a surprise if you take half of something away, the number of lanes, that you actually end up with more performance for a street. And it just simply gets right down to the crunch in the numbers. In science, if you have fewer of something, it can be more efficient. The road diet is one of the most cost efficient ways to improve a roadway. You can do a mile of roadway for about $50,000, which is the cost of one uh, sidewalk bulb out or to compare it, a traffic signal could cost three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars. So we're in New Haven looking at some roadways that were uh, way overbuilt. We got, as you can see, the roads empty a lot of the time and then all of the space in between these two roads on either side was at one time all housing and they bulldozed all of it in order to put a freeway in. Well the freeway never came, never will come, and now we still have these very fast, very wide streets. Earlier we were recording some cars that are going 50 miles an hour down this corridor. One major reason for road diets is safety. We've had several people killed within a block of right where we're standing now, uh, doctors who work here in the hospital. So we're really looking at all the ways we can get out those lanes we no longer need, which when you have too many lanes, you induce more speeding and more risky behavior. As we're making a move back to cities, as people want to live more and more in cities, so many of the streets in our cities, 30, sometimes 40% of the streets could operate better with fewer lanes. And otherwise, change the street back to a quieter version of its former self. And it's working.